Okay, we've got the menu set up and uh, looking about the way we want it. So now I want to go over and create a page and show you how to uh, create a page for your website. You go to the Pages menu and click the Add New. And uh, what you get here is, is pretty much a word processor. And you can choose between Visual or HTML. HTML would be the tab you would want to use if you were just going to do it uh, using HTML code. So this is going to be our uh, About Us page. We're going to use this page for information about the congregation. You see here when I create the page, it uh, gives it a uh, what's called a permalink, which is the address of where the page is going to be online. So that's the link or the address that you would want to link to or that you would want to uh, send people to show them how to get to your page. This uh, particular theme that I'm using from StudioPress has SEO settings included. Uh, SEO is search engine optimization. So I'm going to set a custom document title and a uh, description here and give it some meta tags because that's what search engines look for when somebody types in a search term in Google. Uh, those, will, those are things that will help Google find my pages. And I, I want to do that to, to generate traffic to my, to my site. So we're going to get those SEO settings uh, set up and uh, name the page. It's going to generate the link for the page, and then we can start filling in the content. And uh, as I said uh, a minute ago, the uh, area here where you type in your, your content or where you insert your content is, is pretty much uh, just like a word processor. So if you, know, if you know how to use Microsoft Word or you know how to use just about any word processor, this will be very familiar for you. But you can also work in HTML. So if you know HTML code, uh, you can do a little more advanced formatting and uh, WordPress will recognize that. I'm just going to erase this out of here and show you what it would look like if you uh, inserted it using HTML code and how WordPress will, will format that for you. See, I've got my uh, paragraph tags here. Those are the tags that break the text into different paragraphs, and the strong tag makes the text bold. So when I switch back to visual, you're going to see that uh, formatting has uh, taken place, and you can see it uh, here in the visual tab. Um, we're going to do most of our work here in the visual tab uh, for those that don't know HTML. Uh, again, it works just like a word processor. You've got your bold and italics and bulleted list and numbered list and the uh, 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 alignment and, and different things. Now, I've inserted this text, uh, and you notice it has a Bible reference there. I'm going to show you a really nice plugin to use uh, for your text with Bible references. I'm going to go to the plugin page. I'll just click Add New and uh, open it. I want to open it in a new tab because I don't want to uh, erase what I've already typed in there. So I've opened this up in a new tab and in the uh, install new plugins page I'm just going to do a search for ref tagger and that's the name of the plugin so of course that's going to come right up. And you see you can read here what it does. It's from Logos Bible Software uh, which is a well-respected uh, uh, company so you know it's going to be a good plugin. Uh, it's from a reputable source. So yes, I want to install that plugin. And then I'm going to activate that plugin. And you see here now it's in my list of plugins. There are some uh, settings that, that we can go through. We'll go through those in just a minute. But let me show you what it does to that uh, uh, Bible reference. Where I have that Bible reference in my text, I can just go over and I can preview the page. Uh, and preview is what you would do before you publish to see how it looks. And you see how RefTagger has converted that Bible reference into a link that actually pops up the biblical text right on the, right on the page. So somebody can read through those verses as they read my content. Uh, but the default Bible version is uh, the uh, ESV. I, I don't want to use that one. I want to change that. I like the uh, uh, New King James. So I'm going to change the settings here for uh, ref tagger to uh, be according to my liking. Uh, and I'm going to change the Bible version to New King James. I'm going to have the links open in a new window because I don't want them to I don't want them to navigate away from my page. I want them to be able to stay on my page, so I want it to open in a new window. 
you can just go through the settings here. You see you can uh, set the uh, Bible version that will open. Uh, if they click the link to open your text in their Logos Bible software on their computer, it'll still open in the New King James. Uh, you can insert the little uh, Logos Bible software icon there. Uh, you can show a tooltip pop-up uh, when somebody hovers over that link. That's what you saw when I went to the page just a moment ago. So there's just some, some uh, different settings here, some, some uh, nice settings, advanced settings, to, to make that work the way you want it to work. You see here you can, you can set it to only look in certain kinds of text. So if you don't want to look in the headings and uh, the, the uh, other uh, places of formatted text, you can, you can set that. So there's what that looks like once you get it set up. Now you see it's displaying New King James. If I click more, then it will go to the uh, biblia.com website and the person can uh, uh, read the context or study the passage uh, in, on the uh, biblia.com website. So it's looking pretty good. I really like RefTagger. Uh, I, I use it on just about all of my sites uh, that use Bible references in the text because I want people to be able to read those verses right on the page. So I'm just going to fill in uh, the information here. I've already written it, so I'm, I'm just copying and pasting it in. And you see I can just uh, format that the same way I would uh, in a uh, in any word processor uh, all the buttons are up there for the formatting the alignment uh, everything I need to get that looking just the way I want it Let's go back and preview the page again, see how it's looking. You see all these Bible references. The ref tagger has automatically converted those Bible references to links, and you can browse through and read those references. It makes it nice for the person writing the page, too, just to check and make sure they've got the right verses in there. I don't like this uh, Logos link. I'm going to take that out. It, it kind of breaks up the flow of the text too much. So I'm just going to uncheck that, save settings, then go back and refresh the page and those links should be gone. And they are. And that, that looks uh, a lot nicer, uh, a lot better formatting. And you see there, that's coming up 2 Timothy 3.16 in one window and 17 in another window. And to fix that, I just need to change that comma to a dash. And you know, a lot of your, your uh, formatting is going to be just these little these little uh, uh, touch-ups here and there as you go through, that's what makes that preview button so nice. You can, you can keep checking it and, and uh, make those little corrections as you go so that when you publish your page, it's just the way you want it. So I'm just going to go through and finish filling this in. I've got some HTML code in there I need to clean out because when I wrote it, I wrote it using HTML. Now I'm going to put a uh, formatted heading here in the bottom. I'm going to put that to heading 2. It'll make it a, a bigger, bolder uh, format. And that's going to reference a contact form. So when we come back in the next installment, we're going to set up that contact form for our About Us page.